I think we bailed after the Thanksgiving. Okay, go ahead and start talking now. I could start talking now. <laughs> Hi, you guys. Uh, Ginger Cook here. I'm excited to tell you that tonight we're going to be going to the coast of California and painting the ocean there, kind of up on a cliff overlooking. It's going to be, if you're a little tired of winter, let's, uh, let, hey, let's go surfing now, man. <laughs> let's do something else. <laughs> On the uh, and and we we'll have some giveaways. It'll be a fun night. So thanks, and um, we can't wait to have you come play with us. <laughs> okay. So, so now we're down on the. Have you now we're off the introduction. Yeah, yeah. Now we're down here. All right. You see we're this? Out all that fancy stuff. We won't have any fancy stuff. This is our big stack of a. This is real. This isn't colored paper. This is real. Um, a canvas, and this is a, they're sold out of it, but Jerry's Autorama sells at Paramount, six by eight sheets, and whenever we have any leftover paint, John just paints, uh, uses it, and very diligently paints all these, and they're kind of in order, and we're going to start off with a blue one, you know, blue, some sort of turquoise blue color, if you're using, uh, if you're using the Salvador paints, I would say that's probably brilliant blue, or maybe even cyan, probably cyan, primary cyan with a little white, it's the color of this, and uh, but you know any old blue will do. It's fine. You can always paint over it. That's what you. Don't you love it? Look at all the colors we've got now. Aren't you just this fun? So we're going to be doing that, and uh, let's see. I guess I can put those back down. And John's microphone is out, so he's going to. If you ask questions, now here's the deal. Um, if you ask questions, you must put them in cal capital letters, and then John. You know, and then John will then, uh, we, as best we can, will try to uh, relay the questions to me. I will repeat them, and then we will say what's going to happen, yes and yes. So uh, if I can answer the question, I'll do my very best. And if you really have a burning question, you want to know it, and you feel like you've been ignored, write us. Use the contact us, gingercooklive.gallery, any of our websites. Contact us, say, this is a question I would like Ginger to answer on her show. Okay, and we'd love to use your name too. Happy to do it. So if you have a question like that, um, that might be fun. So if, you know, you will not be forgotten. Okay. Now this is kind of a this was the photo we have that I found of um, uh, kind of this big Sur part of California. That's what we're going to be painting tonight. Don't you think that's pretty? Kind of gets you know like if we can't go on out of the house, can't go on vacation. Perhaps we can take one through paint. Um, so, like I say, it's a little version. It's six by eight. Um, I'm using uh, the Salvador paints. We will be giving away a brand new kit like this. Um, here's the brand new one with the 12 brushes. Someone, uh, Salvador will be giving this away. We will do a drawing at the end of the night. So, we, the only way you can really have a chance to win one of these, the way we found, is if you will join us for our live broadcasts, which are every Monday at 5.30 Central Time. So that that's, um, you don't have to be present to win, okay? So if you just want to set the alarm and enter, I guess you could do that, you know? But, um, you know, we appreciate the fact that we have, we kind of, it's not kind of, we really appreciate the fact that there are many of you who are happy to join us on our live show, you make lovely comments. You keep the ch chat happy. You comment after the show in the, below the comments. We appreciate you guys. And uh, we'll also, tonight's painting also will be going to uh, someone who's going to enter the contest for that. Now, if you'll, uh, if you remember, we did a Thanksgiving show on Thursday. And we did give away the smaller painting. But this is actually the one that we painted 8 by 10 and I've seen a couple of these in a Ginger Cook Acrylic Facebook Club come back where some of you have painted them. One gal, you can change these figures easy enough to make them a boy or a girl. Uh, one lady did hers in um, all in pajamas. Barbara did. It had the kids in pajamas and, bright, and both blonde haired. You know, make, if you got some, kind of customize this. This is really a good tutorial. If you haven't seen, haven't done this one yet, this is really fun and I think a great holiday one. But we've had a lot of holiday and I think you will agree with me. It might be nice to do some unholiday stuff. The um, uh, the paints I'm using, like I say, are um, are the Salvador paints. 
Uh, right now, there's all kinds of specials going on with them because of Cyber Monday and stuff. And there's two cu cu there's coupon codes uh, below in the description. And you, if you pile those on, you'd be amazed that they, these sets normally start at $25. But if you add the coupon codes, wow, you can really, and they're regular discounted stuff. Wait till you see what you can get. So that's a, on Amazon in our store. Uh, if you want to find our store, uh, go to gingercooklive.gallery. Just just scroll on down where it says Amazon store. Click that. Takes you right to the store, and it gives you kind of it tells you kind of where we're getting. That's uh, where we get our stuff. Also, that's where our special kit is available for the um, new uh, color mixing tutorial, where all the, the supplies that we recommend are there. Of course, you could get them anywhere, but that's where they recommend. Now, as to the colorful paints, I put out all the colors. Isn't that nice? Um, I'm using golden white and, uh, and zinc white. But everything, these are all the colors except for black and white and the Salvador paints. And they're beautiful, bright colors. And I've got them labeled. Uh, let's turn this upside like this. These are like little Avery labels. And if you go to gingercookstore.com and you go to what? Search label. Just search. The, put the word label in there. You'll see where you can get the template for that. And you just have to go to our Amazon store, and you can get the Avery labels. And we have those not only for this set, but for our major 12 paint colors that we use in the larger paints, in the Holbein, in the Liquitex, or the, um, you know, we have the bigger labels, too. So we have those available, and these are free. Uh, at least the print part is, and you still have to buy the labels. So, there. That Was that all clear? Sort of? Was that clear, John? Because I really want to be clear. Okay, and I'm finding something here I'm going to grab, too. Um, if you guys like, these are neat, aren't they? They keep stuff from rolling off. They're really meant for the kitchen, but I found those on Amazon, and they're, they're my new happy thing. Yeah, they, they never made it to the kitchen, because they, 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 in fact, I was showing these. You guys know my daughter, Cinnamon, um, who's live on Tuesdays at 5, um, on YouTube, uh, I'm showing because she's painting on a desk now too. And I showed her this. She says, "Oh, I gotta get those. Those are cool, and they are right. Because you can take stuff like this that wants to roll around. You just stick them in there like that, and nothing is rolling around. Yes and yes. So there you go. All right. And if you need the space, I can move it. Sometimes we're painting something really big, and I need that space. So back to what we were doing. Now let's see. We were doing something. Oh yeah, we were painting this. Okay, so let's take a moment and a ruler. Let's take a ruler. I think I have a ruler somewhere. Probably have a ruler somewhere. Maybe in a drawer. You have one in your pocket? Well, you know, usually they're in a bucket. And this is absolutely true, John. They're oftentimes the rulers find their way back to the bucket. I've noticed that. And then sometimes they don't. Like these have rulers, but they're... Um, I can't read the writing anymore on those. On a good day, I can't read the writing. Can you oh, use a red one? I can use a red one. All right, so we know this is 6 by 8. So we're going to show you a fast way to do this. This is 6 by 8. You started off with a light blue canvas. Okay, let's, now see, this is what I mean. You can move stuff out of the way if you need to. All right, so you guys are with me. And let's, I think we can move this paint set somewhere. We don't need that out. All right, so now we got room. So I'm going to just come over here and... Um, Turn the ruler upside up, and uh, so I'll just make a little mark at four and two and six, yes? And we're going to do that the same way. You're going to get this easy. This is a really easy painting. So three and one and a half and uh, four and a half, okay? So really, really easy painting. So, um, you're going, how easy is it? I will. I want to show you, you see me use T-squares, but on smaller things, sometimes a triangle can be just as nifty. S triangles are a must-have. If you line up one edge on a straight, something that's straight, could be a building, could be anything, right? In this case, it's the side of the canvas. You line that up, and then this line has to be straight. Yes and yes. Um, they're a little less... Uh, little less bulky than um, uh, than a triangle. And when you're doing small stuff, sometimes you need a straight line for a building. You just need a straight line for something, yeah? And uh, 
And this is the ticket. And see, it, it goes all, this one is a, what size is this? This is a 8 inch, I think. Well, I guess we could measure it, but then I'd have to grab the ruler again. Well, let's do it for you, because you want to know, right? So, yeah, this is an 8 inch triangle. See, eight, 8 inches on that side and 8 inches on that side. No, it can't be. Is that eight? That can't be eight inches, too, can it? It is. And then what's it this way? Oh, it's um longer that way. All right. <laughs> Let's not get into the details. You want a triangle because they come in all sizes. So you you they do. So you want a little one and a couple big ones, and they're they're, they're not expensive. I always tell you know T squares. If you get a nice heavy metal one or something. They can they can get up there and they never put them on sale. But these little triangles are um, pretty pretty neat, I think. And uh, you know they can you can flip them over either side works. See, yeah, like that. You're going, whoa, cool, dude, right? All right, so let's just let's just do this. If you would spend more time gritting, you would spend less time correcting. That is a fat, profound thought, is it not? More time gritting, less time correcting. Whoa. So, what you want to do, and this is such a, okay, you're going to go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, this is eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen. 16. You got 16 squares, right? The ones you really the most care about is you know that. So if you if you if you do these two, uh, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen. You know what this does? Now this is really important. What this does is you'll find the more you do this, the less you'll need to do it. Your mind will do it for you. Your mind will start dividing the canvas in half and in thirds. It's amazing, and you'll just sketch it on and wonder how I did that. You did it because it's like when people play scales on the piano. When I was a kid, we had this. My mother could play the piano pretty well, and she felt it important for young girls to have piano lessons. And not wrong. I mean, I tried to do that with my child, and that lasted about two months. And the guy said she's hopeless. Send her home. <laughs> Something like that. But um, the. Uh, he probably wasn't the best piano teacher. He was a musician trying to earn a little money, I think, for his rock band. So he didn't have the patience for a six-year-old. But not that being said, that story aside, the um, bad mother didn't get her more piano lessons. I just believed it was just terrible. But listen, if somebody had explained to me why you do it, why do you play those scales? and Because that's boring to me. That's just really torture. And if they'd explained I was getting ear memory and muscle memory for those keyboards so that if I reached over here on the piano, this was a piano, I reached over here, I would know exactly what sound I was going to get before I touched it or way down here. Well, this is the same thing. This is exactly the same thing. Suck it up, you guys. Take the time to do this for a while at least and see how much better your drawing skills improve, okay? Because, by the way, Everybody learned to draw when they learned handwriting. So now I don't want to hear this from any of you. Well, I can't draw. Yes, you did. You learned how to draw. And if, when you learned handwriting, now we're just going to show you where to put the wiggles. Yes? So here's number four. And we know we come up a little bit up here like that. And then in, in, in below thin seven, we come down just a little bit like this and connect to four. Just there's a little space. Now this is interesting. Right down here, between f 5 and 9, between this square and about halfway and just below, we can come here like this and go all the way to the middle, yeah? And then we're going to create a little hill like this and like that. There you go. And then right before 11, right here in about, ten, about, a, uh, about a third of the way on 10, we're going to do another mountain up here like this and come up here. Well, you know, I know you could have just freehanded that in, but, and then here's our above here, and five, right um, right below the nose of that hill is our, our horizon line. All right, let's stop and ask everybody, what's a horizon line? 
Hmm? We'll tell you in a minute. Think about that. What's a horizon line? No, you all want to know. So we're going to do a horizon line. Now let's skip down. Let's skip down to square 10. And uh, right at the bottom, it, this goes at an angle. This goes up a little bit, kind of at an angle, and then goes straight and at an angle. And this coastline comes down here at an angle and rounds around. See, like that? Kind of is at an angle. And then what, what happens? It goes at this little point here. It goes up here. And there's a space here, right there. Do you see that space where 10 is? You've got to make sure you leave that space. Okay, and this is the next set of hills, which kind of come up this way. Okay? And then this goes this way. And, and then there's a few rocks out in here, which we can add later. There's a few rocks out in here. But basically, you guys, that's your, um, that's your, uh, that's all there is to drawing this in. Yes and yes? So, isn't that, come on, that's easy, right? Well, your horizon line is just below the nose of this mountain here. So slightly above, just, just slightly the, above, above the line. This is the, it's slightly above nine, just slightly above nine, slightly above half. It, generally speaking, you don't like to have a horizon line that's um, halfway. You, want it, you never want it halfway. It's slightly above half, okay? It's about a quarter of an inch above half. No, it's actually, gonna, let's, let's bring the nose up a little more and bring this horizon line up, because I think we have it too low. Let's bring the nose up there on this, this hill. We'll just bring it up, because you don't want, you really don't want a horizon line in half, okay? So there you go. That's our picture. I've got it on my uh, iPad, so I can see it. So do you have any questions, John, before we get going? Yeah, they want me to talk. John can't talk because he's got the, no microphone. He said he's not in timeout. That we, we, we had the uh, microphone died. We had to buy two new microphones that are not going to get here because till Wednesday. It's the holidays. What can I say? And hopefully they'll get here Wednesday. We had to buy two new ones. The others made it two years, which isn't great, but it isn't all that awful either. Okay. Because we use them every day, so we use them all the time. So there's our. We'll put our triangle away. So. Any questions, John, other than the fact they want you to talk? Nope, that's it. All right, so people are, you guys are pretty, pretty copacetic with that, right? I like that word, like it, copacetic. That's something that sounds like we used to say in the 60s, I'm copacetic, man. Dude. All right, so, all right, so what I want to do is I want to take some white paint and a little bit of blue-violet, okay, a little bit of purple and white, Okay, and a little bit of ultramarine blue. Okay, and I want to just come in here like this and just lock in this top hill like this. This is my top hill. And I'm going to lock that in. And why am I locking this in? Because I've spent some time getting this wonderful line and I don't want to lose it. Make sense? And, uh,. All right, so I'm going to lock that hill in, okay? And then as long as I'm doing stuff, I'm going to rinse my brain. I'm going to lock these hills in. And then we'll work on the sky and the water, and it'll all be fun. This is so easy. You're going to, this is such a neat painting, and you're going to be surprised at how easy it is. Tammy wants to know how to make the soap green. Well, Tammy, soap green is, um, really it, it's really <laughs> supposed to be sap green, but it, it was done in China, so they... Thought it was soap green. Okay, it's okay. It's fun, and uh, I actually love it. It's so fun. I have soap green. So Sammy, uh, Tammy, soap green is um, is going to be ultramarine blue, in uh, yellow oxide and a little bit of. Um, uh, well, it's also the whole recipes in our color mixing journal. We'll tell you. I did good on that one. Yeah, yeah. It's an it's an interesting it's an interesting color combination. In fact, I'll show it to you later in our color mixing journal. I'll show. You. Let's stop everything and show Tammy how to make soap green. Want to? Um, do I have my journal? Have journal over there? I do. Now look. Well, John, hey, before you go that far, say thank you to Jonathan for the donation through the Super Chat. 
Jonathan, thank you so much for the donation through Super Chat. That means a lot. It helps toward our microphones, which... Um, Speaking of that, Clarice is sending a donation through PayPal. Miss you, John. Hope this helps with the new mic. Merry Christmas. Oh, thanks, Clarice, Clarice, and Merry Christmas to you. Thank you very much for the donation through the PayPal system. So, and Andrew, happy holidays. Enjoy the newsletter and purchase the mixing, color mixing and vote for Taurus. Looking forward to them. His donation came through PayPal. Andrew, thank you very much for that. We thank appreciate it. Thank you very it. much. The microphones we got are... Yeah, that we they're, bought, a hefty, we, they're a hefty purchase. We, we went ahead. John went ahead and researched it and found... Like the second best microphones in the world, oh, yeah. right? Not, not the first. The first ones were, you know, I guess. One. I could get two for the price of that one. Yeah, so we got two for the price. But, uh, you know, and we're after, you know, but, you know, if we had our own network, maybe we'd get the other ones. But anyway, so this is the kind of central color mixing journal. Oh, you want me to black out, you said. And, um, and what I want to show you is uh, one of the things we have in the journal which you get to make yourself, by the way. We don't sell you the book. You get it. We show 13 hours of video on how to do the book, right? But here are the Salvador paints. And one of the things we do is show you how to make the colors. So here's the reds, here's the blues, and, and the last page should be the greens. Yes and yes? We have tabs, there, you know, we have tabs right? Yeah, okay, we have tabs. So there's the greens. Now, soap green is, right? Interesting. Thalo blue I did make it. plus burnt umber plus cad yellow medium is how you make soap green. If you want it lighter. If you, if you want it lighter, it's white. If you just have thalo blue, uh, cad yellow medium, burnt umber, and, and, and thalo blue is how you make soap green. And here's, the, here's how you make all of their greens. Isn't that cool? And we were able to do all the greens. We we were able to take, we were able to do all the colors. We couldn't get one, two of the yellows. Two of the yellows, because yellows are primary, and those are the ones. But if you have our two bonus colors, and we show you how to take 12 colors and make all the colors. Ah. And then, then at the back, then we show you what they look like in black and white. And somebody made the cute question. She said, don't the pages stick together? No, because this is a photograph of that, and this is glued onto the page. Okay, this is an actual paint here, friends. Uh, you want to see what your painting would look like in black and white. And for instance, like here is the, um, here you show, we, we show you um, this painting of these boats, and I tell everybody, always do a black and white photograph of your painting, and you can check your values, right? So, um, so we show you how to use uh, the journal to when you're making a painting. For instance, suppose you wanted that color. You could flip back through the book and find that color in the blues and go ahead and find the recipe to make it because you wrote it down and you'll remember it. This is absolutely marvelous. So I'll tell you more about that. There, we're having these on sale between now uh, introductory, it's introductory special there no this book and the um, the painting that goes with it which is way cool too because we're um, the boat painting is got a you know video for that right so we have that and the five hour tutorial for this boat painting all in a package deal and normally over $200 value for $69. And you still, of course, you still have to buy the journal, but they're on sale right now. $59. It, it, what did I say? You said $59. $59, right? $59, yeah. sorry. $59. It'll be well over 100 once it comes off sale. Yeah, it'll be well over 100 just for the journal when it comes off sale. Right? So that's a, um, I mean, that's a just, uh, we just wanted to do an introductory offer on that. And, uh, it's really, um, yeah, I think I had that sheet somewhere here. I lost it. Well, that's not just a matter. Anyway, that's, and so we show you how to do that, and we show you how to do this. And, um, and I don't care if you live in Europe and you're using diff different professional paints than us. It doesn't really matter the brand of paints. As long as you get close to the original colors for our original 12, you'd be amazed what you can do. Again, you, want to use your paints you, have to, you have to use your paints to start with, because that's what you got. Yes, yes, and yes. And um, and also, John did a great cost analysis of, of this, and he showed that. He did a great cost analysis of... Um, for any paint, not just all paint. 
all paints. He was explaining the difference between, you know, the paints and so forth and, and, and cost analysis. And um, one of the reasons we recommend the Salvadors when you're first starting out is um, because if you're doing small things, um, if they're, it's a very inexpensive way to get started painting with a, with a good quality paint. Uh, when you're starting to buy, you know, the, the, you know, nice big tubes of uh, professional acrylics, you can be well over two hundred dollars just in the paint. Paint, but you can, you know, you don't have to buy everything in one day either. You can, as you as you use paint up, you replace it with something else, right? So there you go. All right, I thought I was going to do this here, right? Um, a little bit of burnt umber and. Um, We have this angle that's um we actually went out of our. It, so, repeat the question. so oh so the question was sorry John, I'm so used to John just talking. Um, the question is what kind of table am I painting on? Well, I'm I've got like a just a flat folding table and then this is like an angled easel. Um, it's an easel with a with a kind of like a drawing board it's thing. Drawing it's really a drawing table and we've and it's been angled. Um, uh. You know, really, my whole life, I always painted on easels, and um, got a little bit of magenta with that. I want this sort of warmer. And uh, pull up, I've always painted on easels, but um, what um, when we started filming, we didn't have any way to do that. And um, and this, for the most part, is what we're able to easily film. We can get we can do pretty big on this too. In our academy, we've got some really. Um, uh, large uh, canvases that we're able to do. What's the biggest one? 18 by 24, something like that? Uh, we can do 20 by 24. On that. 20 by 24 on this table, which is pretty good and still film it. All right. Um, and I've gotten, and so I've gotten sort of used to that. All right. So the next one's going to be uh, this color, just a permanent violet. The, the color mixing guide can be purchased on the color mixing guide, the quintessential ginger cook's quintessential color mixing guide can be purchased at gingercookstore.com on the home page. That's where the special pricing is to, to the end of the year. All right, so I've got this is my second one here, and that's just a, that's just a permanent violet, a little bit of yellow and white. So you see, I've got the three the three main hills here, yes and yes. Okay. And that little interlude gave us enough time where we could um, then paint the sky, and this is dry. Yeah? That's what you, you I know you, we wanted to do that. So, um, yeah, this was a, it, it, this is, was an interesting, um, this was an interesting week last week because, you know, we, you know, we did the Thursday Thanksgiving show. And those of you who got to join us, thank you very much for that. That was fun. I think we had fun. Um, it was always, it's always nice to, you know, celebrate the holidays with friends. And I think I, we, we consider you guys all friends. So thank you very much for that. All right. So now we're going to use a bigger brush here, that angle brush. And I want a turquoise color. I like the sky in here. I'm going to go a little more turquoise than this. But I like the sky in here. And um, so we're going to do what's called a gradated sky. Now we have a video on YouTube on how to do gradations. And we also have it in the, um, in the um, back to basics kit that we've got. We've got that too. But basically what you want to do when you're doing a gradated sky in watercolor, you always overlap each thing. But when you do it in acrylics, you can't do it that way. All right. So in other words, if you you know you, you're not overlapping here and then here and then here and so forth. You, so we're going to start with the color that we want, which is a, let's 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 do a little bit of this primary cyan, right? And we'll start. It's a pretty nice dark color up here. It's probably what's in the sky already, but you may not have this color. So I'm just going to go ahead. Ooh, I want a little more turquoise. So but how would I do that? Let's add a tiny bit of the primary yellow to that. Just a tiny bit, like maybe two percent, and then a little bit more of this white, and see what we get. There you go. That's the pretty. That's the that's the turquoise. All right, you ready? So I'm going to come across here like that, 
And uh, now, you with me on this, yeah? Now, I'm going to come into white paint, all right? And I'm going to start underneath it like this. Titanium white. This is titanium white. And I'm going to come underneath it like this. And as I kind of erase all our... Um, Okay, like this. Now, when I get up to this line, so I, I don't want to, if I wanted a cloud bank, I could make some clouds. If I don't want a cloud bank, I'll just dampen the brush, wipe it off, and overlap the seam. Just overlap the seam a little bit so that you don't, it just sort of all goes, you know, like that. And then if I want it a little lighter down toward the horizon, I'll take a little more white. And uh, do the same thing. I'll add some just titanium white here, but I, the color's out of my brush now. Do you see what I mean? So if I do this, now I've got my cloud bank up here. And so that I've got some real distance in the sky that I wouldn't have had otherwise. Okay? And then you could even do it if I wanted it whiter, I could even do a little more white here too. Just. Put a little bit of a cloud bank here. Just you know, in the ocean, there's always that sort of fog bank. And if you're ever out there uh, sailing, you wonder if it's going to come in, and you're going to get in the that sort of foggy thing. And then I want to come under here with the with the sky color again. Okay, this way, and kind of just soften that line because we're blurring that out. Now let's do a little bit stronger ocean color, more of the primary cyan come on in here like this and uh, now this is where we're going to get into the layers because the nice thing about that did you know and, and when you're talking about water that um, if it's darker it's deeper it's, yeah, like the like the darker if you're looking at it, if it's real dark it's real deep there you know that Mostly. I think that's true, John. You don't think that's true? Yeah, that's true. I had to process it. Yeah, to think about it. He had to think about it. He, was a, he, he didn't want me to be telling you the wrong thing here. All right, so now I'm going to take some more white and make a very nice light turquoise color. Yes, again. I want to come up here around the shore. This is lighter. And say this way. Let's take a little bit of that. To, it's actually brilliant blue. I like that. A little bit of that brilliant blue color. Let's come around here like that, and then we'll put a little of this in here. Now, what we're going to do here is, this is so um, easy, you're going to take a little bit of the ultramarine blue, and what you want to do is you want to create a little zigzag area like this, and zigzag in some, kind of some waves here. We're just going to zigzag this in like this. Okay. All right. Now, the, and then we're going to take some of that soap green color. All right. And come up here like this. Ooh, a little bit of white. With, let's make a little bit of zinc white with that soap green. That was too dark. Come around here like this. A little bit of that soap green toward our shoreline here. Okay, on the front. Yeah. Now I'm going to just take my my brush is clean. Just going to sort of push this down a little bit. So it's not just just tap it down so it's not quite so dark. There we go. A little bit of water on the brush. Just tap it down here. Okay, with me. And then maybe a little bit this tiny bit of this back here, but not much. Okay. So to get some more depth into our water, let's take some of that light turquoise. Come on up here, because acrylics dry darker. Come this way. Okay, and leave some of that other blue color. Okay, that's the trick. Leave some of the other blue color. Kind of come between here like that. Lighten some stuff up. There we go. And then I want something kind of turquoisey here, too. Let's take a little more yellow and blue and white. Make this sort of turquoisey green, blue green color. That's pretty, too. Let's let's get all let's put all the colors in. That's nice, right? 
That's fun. So any questions, John? You must have some. Uh, the question I had that uh, came up was, I heard your site, I'm not sure I understand the pricing for the book, boat, and I don't know how to do it, even though we've had five other people figure out how to do it. Well, look, watch the video, introductory video. First off, if you if you don't if you don't know how if you go to our website, thegingercookstore.com, and you're not sure, watch the introductory video to the book. You don't own a book; you have to go buy the actual paper to make the journal. You make that yourself, and there's actually 13 hours of video just on how to do the color mixing, and then as a bonus, and we discounted that from a hundred dollars and down, and then. We added a second video for the boats, which is five hours, and we combined them. So you could see how to use, so you're, this is a working art journal. The idea is that every time you do a painting, you use the journal. And so uh, you keep track of how you made the colors, and if you're not sure how to mix the color, you refer back to your journal. It took me 13 hours of filming to make that journal, and John probably another 20 in editing it, okay? So we've got some uh, with the, the most clear and concise and easiest way to learn to mix colors there ever was. Honestly, it's something uh, even our most whether you're a professional artist or whether you just started out, it doesn't matter. It's phenomenal. Yes and yes. We think so. All right. Good. And so yeah, watch the watch the video first. Uh, you, you'll see a link there on the front page. You know about this journal, and it'll explain. It shows you the introduction to the journal and what it's all about. And for $59.95, between now and the first of the year, you get both the 13 hours of the, the 31st, you get both the 13 hours of the journal and five hours, and five hours of the other lesson. So what wonderful. So, so it's over $200 value. Yep. And you get that. And, you, and, and if we add anything, for instance, if we decide to show you, there's some bonus chapters in there already on different colors. But if we do another bonus ch chapter, you will automate and add it. We'll, you will automatically have that if we ever, as we, add to it. yeah, and we have some things that we want to add to it, and you'll automatically get that too. It'll just keep giving. It's the painting. That's the stuff that keeps on giving. All right, so we're going to start with the back hill, and I want to make a little shadow color. So I'm going to take a little ultramarine blue and white and I think a little bit of um, um, magenta. Okay, maybe a little more of this. How about some turquoise blue? That's pretty. Some of that turquoise blue color. I want to say that this is my, I'm going to say this is my first shadow on this hill up here like that. And we're going to come back up here like that. Okay, that's going to be my shadow. And I've got a little one right here. And you can hardly see it, but trust me on this. So then we're going to go take some burnt sienna and maybe a little bit of the yellow ochre or oxide, depending on what you're using, in white. And let's add a little bit of that purple color to it. A little bit of uh, purple blue violet just a touch of that color to that and more try some zinc white yeah yes and yes uh, I want it wider let's try with titanium I want this lighter okay all right so that's the color I've got here and I'm going to uh, wipe all the paint off my brush see that hold it like this and barely touch it and kind of rub it over this so that some of the purple is showing through like for instance, I know that this is a top of this, and then the top of this is going to have a little bit of light. <coughs> okay. So these shadows are on the right hand side, yeah. Now let's get a little bit lighter here. Let's get a little bit of zinc white and come up here and lighten this again. And now we'll just use the brush. Just tap this in here. Probably should have gone to a smaller brush, but that's all right. I'm going to lighten this up a little bit here, a little bit up here. Remember, as you get further in the background, hills have a tendency to gray. And um, so then I want 
this to be very light right here. Again, I'm going to lighten this up just a bit here like that. All right. Now, let's take a small brush, and I'm going to make a little bit of a dark shadow here. This is a kind of a nice dark shadow going this way. And I'm going to have just a couple in here like that, not too much dark shadow. Just a little bit of that, probably darker than I need, but maybe a little bit of zinc bite over that will soften that a bit. There you go. Zinc white or mixing white is a it's a good one. You need to change a color, but you don't want to change it a lot, right? So then there's our back hill, yeah? Now we're going to do the same thing, add a little bit more white to the front hill, and um, kind of just drag our uh, brush on it. Just leave some of this other showing through, coming up here like that. And I like this color here, so maybe add a little bit of that over here too. All right, so now um, let's take a little bit of this peach color, so add a little tiny bit of the violet, permanent violet, and lighten this up just a bit. There you go. So you had some dark and some light, and so that's that's this hill, okay? And let's do a little bit on this one too. There we go. All right. So there's our back hills, okay? And then um, I need that lighter color. What kind of a light color back up in here? These back hills, just in a couple places. All right. So get, we're getting a little, we want a little depth. Now let's take that soap green color and uh, just come on up here on the top of this and tap in here like that and suggest that there might be a some trees or something growing up there. Okay. And uh, then we'll take some zinc white and soap green and just uh, let's take a little bit of that yellow green with it. A lighter green here on top of this hill. Let's just come down here like that. All right, so we brought that hill forward. Yeah, yes and yes. This is farther back. That hill's forward. Now, um, this is kind of fun, yeah? Now this one, any questions, John, why I'm happily making hills? Oh, Alright, so we're we'll back to the soap green, right? I'm going to come up here on this one, right about here, and I'm going to put some bigger trees here. Using this small little angle brush, I'm going to do some dark trees, about halfway, like this. I'm going to say that there's some growing on this cliff here. Let's just go back up here a little bit, too, about like that. Okay, see that there's some, we're getting some distance, yeah? Now, let's take a little bit of this uh, ultramarine blue color on our brush. I'm not rinsing it, right? Let's come back up here and let's make a little shadow right here on our coastline. Let's make some shadows where there might be some rocks, okay? Because this has had a chance to dry. I'm going to say, remember the shadows, the right side of the rocks are the shadows in this picture. It's got some really good lighting in it. All right, so far so good, yeah. And um, I think I want to bring this out even a little lower than I had it. Um, I'm going to bring out the water line a little bit. Here you go, the coastline here. All right, now, I'm going to keep the same brush, a little yellow oxide. Okay, so then I want to come down here like this and just suggest a cliff edge down here about like that. Okay, so far so good. Then back to burnt sienna and white. We're just moving right along here. You two, you know, right, burnt sienna white's all dry now. Okay, so we're just leaving some of this darker color showing through. The thing is you don't paint it You'll see me do this all the time. I'll put paint on the brush and wipe it off. I don't see you guys doing that all the time, and that's a real secret. 
put the paint on the brush, then wipe it off. If you don't have enough, you can always get a little more. But there's some of this color back here on this uh, cliff here. I have a question for you. Yeah, question. Is ruby satin good for people who don't like heavy body, or should they use a softer brush? I like Winter Newton Galleria and don't like brush strokes. So the question is, if you don't like brush strokes, is a, are the ruby satin silvers the, br the brush for you? Um, I love the angle brushes for this. A softer one of that would be um, uh, there are other people that make an angle brush that are softer um, than you can, you can paint with those without leaving a brush mark. Oh, but I don't have to leave a brush mark. He's, he's absolutely right. I, can, I don't do brush marking. I paint more like a watercolor. And that you don't have to have it. But I, I, I wouldn't trade my ruby satins for anything. Yeah. They're the best brushes ever. Until we find another one. Cinnamon's promised me some new new ones. I'm waiting for hers. But incidentally, if you ha the best brush hope in the world is the stuff that Cinnamon's making, and um, John can't get along without it. It is phenomenally good stuff. And um, um, uh, if you haven't yeah, tried that, the ultimate silver, silver satin eighty eight brushes. Those are soft. We have some of those. Those are the purple handled ones that I got. Yeah. So just say that. Yeah. So, so the silver handle 88 brushes are yeah. some that John kind of likes, right? Yeah, they're softer. They're softer, right? So I'm going to take a little white here, come around my, see how I'm zigzagging this. And uh, going to come around our cliff here. Our coastline with our water, yeah. See, I know you thought this was going to be a really hard painting, and I think you're going to be pleasantly surprised that it isn't. Okay. Now we we know we've got some darker rocks out here, so let's just take some burnt umber and ultramarine blue, and let's make a kind of a dark rock off of here at this coast, very like that, and when it gets Lighter, we'll do something with it. Did the Sherpa say anything about her soap? Yeah, cinnamon, yeah, it's ready to go. She said to tell me that it's ready to go. Okay, so you have to tell them. The Archer, sorry, the Archer, the Archer Sherpa said that her soap was ready to go, that you should guys should contact her, because she does have the best, she actually invented it. It's phenomenal soap, and um, can't say enough about it. It really is, and I've been using the uh, Master Soap for, I don't know, 50 years, 20 years, whatever. And this, um, and theirs is good soap, you know, the Master stuff, but nothing as good as what Cinnamon has. The top of this rock here. Remember the shadows are on the right, where your rocks are, see that? Put your little rocks in, and... Um, We keep adding a little bit here. Is this green dried? It has dried. Um, so probably if you like this style of painting, did you guys know we have a Wave and Water Master Class that just focuses on water in the ocean? And you're going, oh, I had no idea. Well, it's true. We do. And uh, let's just do a little bit of light back there like that, a little bit of sandy beach. And one of the paintings that was, uh, now this is interesting to me. Could you, could you back out a bit a minute, John? This is one of the paintings we did last summer, I think, or the summer before last in the Wave and Water Master Class. They get a new painting every month, and it's on our academy. And look at that. Doesn't this look very similar? But this was done 100 years ago, before civilization. And um, see, I mean, I'm sorry, but very similar, yes and yes? Probably is the same spot, you know? Uh, beauty. Yeah. That, yeah, and that was originally done by an American artist um, right around the turn of the century, and I think we're painting the same thing. But if you like this, it might be, you know, th th I think that's kind of a neat neat thing. All right, so we're going to take a little bit of white and a little bit of yellow oxide, but mostly white. And uh, we're going to come up here and we're going to put, unlike our guy here, we're going to put up our few little, put up our houses here. 
want a little brown with that. That was a little, they're a little too bright. Okay. A little bit of brown with these. But basically, you're saying, how are we doing the houses? Well, you're doing, um, you're making them, um, Too much paint on the brush, just what I told you not to do, yeah? Okay. I did, I wanted to demonstrate that there. So there's our little houses. The Haven't put the roofs on. The, water gingers must have brushes. the ruby satin silver. No. Uh, the water gingers must have brushes. The um, the ruby satin uh, silver brushes. All, 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 the all, of, all, of the, all of the angles. And I must, I love the, they're brights for my larger paintings. I love a brush like this for doing big skies, um, and the Paramount round, Imperial Rounds, that's a good one, number 14. Um, uh, there's, uh, you know, it depends on the size of the painting. Uh, it really does depend on the size, of the, it absolutely depends on the size of the painting. All right, so we're going to put up a little, we're going to lighten up some um, beach, some, something here like this. Again, we're going to just remember that it just keeps changing as you come forward. Lighter colors on your cliffs. I'm just going to suggest that. Now, let's take a little bit of the Pioli red and maybe the Naples yellow and a little bit of Carmine. That looks like a good color. And let's come on up here like this. I'll just do like that, and I'll do this one at an angle like that. All right, so those are our little. That's our little group of village. Um, I'm gonna make this a little smaller. Okay, and we need to have some greenery around it, and if, you know you need to kind of bury your houses a little bit. Here's a little bit of the light green color. Tap that in there like that. Lights coming from where? Don't shout it out all at once. The right up here, so the lighter part of the uh, bushes in here would be lighter than the the the, the right left side's lighter than the right side. Yeah. So that's how you'd paint that. And this is still wet, so we're mixing the. We're actually using a little bit of the yellow, primary yellow, and mixing it into the green. Just using the corner of the brush and uh, just tapping that in there like that. All right, so there's our that's our little houses stuff, right? And uh, wow, this is way cool, right? Now rinse the brush. Let's, go, let's put a little surf up. See, we've got some surf and stuff around these rocks, yeah. So. Um, Let's do that. Let's put a little of the white. This is why I love the angles, because you can just get something very smart or flat or very wide, depending on what you're painting. Let's put a little bit of the where the surf's breaking up here, too, around the point. And, uh, um, and you, if you want to really have your, um, your rock stand out, do the white next to it. So that it, um, see how that rock stands out because we do a little white there. It's called contrast. Yes. Wherever there's a light, there's a dark. Okay. So if you can't see something, then chances are you need to do something lighter. Could have been, I mean, I could have done a little light blue too, but it, you need something lighter. See, here's a little light blue and that would show up too. But that's what you're, that's what you're going for when you're doing this, okay? We're adding a few more colors to the water and kind of making these, kind of erasing some of these lines so they're just not so obvious, like that. And, but they're there, so can you kind of see them coming in to shore, just kind of like that. And then I think I want something lighter back behind here. This the turquoise blue and white is a very pretty color. And uh, Let's see, that's a little bit too much white. Here, let's try a little more turquoise. There you go. Kind of like that turquoisey color. It's kind of a good color. You don't have to do much with it. OK. 
Okay, there we go. And let's do something a little bit darker. Here's a little bit of... Uh, oh, that was the brilliant blue I was using, not the turquoise. This is the turquoisey blue right in here. Okay, I lied. That was the brilliant, brilliant blue, and then this is the turquoise, which is a little bit darker. So, all right. So, how are we doing with our, um, with our, with our foliage? Pretty good, yes. Let's do a little bit more of the greens here. Put a little bit of yellow with it. Okay. There we go. Um, a little bit light. All right, so we know we've got some shadowy colors along on, along the beach. This is one of our darker uh, er areas right here, and our rocks uh, could be a, like a burnt sienna and a little orange coming up here on the side. Our cliff here. A little of that color. Okay. So far, so good. Now, the next thing I'm going to do is just check my lights and darks because my back area got a little darker than I want. My back stuff. So I want to lighten up some of that. So I'll just take a little zinc white and um, Sometimes what I'll do is I'll load the brush, wipe it off, and then do it, load it again. I'll load it twice and then wipe it off. And that way I get just the right amount of paint on the brush. If you haven't tried that, it really works. Okay. All right, here we go. Here's our, our front of our... Uh, let's do a little bit of magenta and a little bit of yellow. Azo yellow and magenta and titanium white. What do we get? That's kind of pretty. That's kind of a nice color. Now let's take some purple and um, tone it down. Purple is the opposite of yellow on the color wheel, so I'll tone it down. And just come on up here like that and just let's do some of this color up here. Okay. So I would say we have a good, um, I think our background is, you know, we've got this beautiful deep blue shadows uh, back here on the, on the cliff. And then you really want the light, you want this, you want the light contrast of the, of the hills. And that's what you're going for. And these hills are never just one color. Okay, and then the same back up in here like this. You want this light color. Uh huh. When I was knitting, I was advised to buy more than needed of a specific dye lot because of the variations in the dye. Do acrylics have the same issue? Um, the question the question is, um, for instance, uh, when this gal was knitting, she was um, advised to buy more of the same dye lot of a certain thread because dye lots change. And, I, and as a, someone that used to sew a lot, that's true with fabric. And it can even be true with house paint. Like when you're painting your house. I mean, the way they can mix colors now, it's unlikely. But for the most part, we have not run into that in acrylic paint. Um, their their, formula their, their is formulas is, is pretty sound, okay? Um, what you're more likely to run into, if it has to come a long ways, all right? If it has to travel a long ways, uh, sometimes what will happen is the... Um, uh, the, the, the emulsion will separate because it's a paint it, the, the binder is the acrylic and it's all whipped up in a fancy machine and if that separates it looks a little bit like um, clear Vaseline kind of pory runny Vaseline and you think that maybe it's water in there it's not, it's your emulsion now you can save a tube like that by maybe putting it in a jar and stirring it all up or something but most part, the farther they have to come, the more likely that happen is to happen. Does that, does that make sense? I'm going to just do the front of these a little bit lighter right there like that in the houses. Yes and yes. Okay, like that. There you go. 
So that was, um, so that would be m probably the most likely. All right, those are our little houses back up on the hill. Now, what goes in here next is the bushes, okay? The, the, the bushes go in here next. So, um, is the, tree? it's like a tree. Okay. It's like a tree, like a bush. It's like a tree. Mm -hmm. So, um, probably what I would want, someone asked about brushes. I would want a dagger brush, okay? And I think I would want to make a, um, like probably a um, kind of a burnt sienna color, maybe with a little soap green, and mix that together with a little water on the brush. Now, I don't want to go up any higher than that, and I want it to come off the canvas over here. So I'm going to... Just do that. Harder you push, the um, fatter the line. Yes. Fatter the trunk of the tree. And um, you don't need a lot of this. Um, need more water. This needs to get very fluid here. Very little pressure. And most of your, well, we might add a few later. Let's take a little bit of this red color to make some a little bit more reddish brown. I'm going to just barely have any up here. I don't want to get it too high. Um, just doesn't have to. Because most of this is, um, is going to be green back in here. So it just, um, I think I'll just use this dagger brush at this point and a little bit of yellow and green and aso yellow medium because what I want is sort of a dark um, I want a dark moss green and I'm just going to come up here like this and kind of come next to this trunk while I'm at it and just push that little bit of color in there like that in this corner and then let's come up here with a little bit more yellow so I've got what, uh, what I'm working with first and let's use a little bit more of that soap green with it what I'm working with is first here is the um, kind of up this side. I'm kind of doing more of a dark green. All right, and um, maybe a little bit over here on this side of the branch. Okay. Here's an unusual question. Mm -hmm. Do you prime your brush before you use it? The question is, do we prime our brush before we use it? I will shape a brush before I use it, and. Um, You'll see me put it in water and wipe it off, maybe, and reshape it. I, I, I put the paint in the pa paint in the brush, then wipe it off, and then paint it again. You know, you saw where I was just talking about that. Maybe somebody would call that priming. What you it comes with sizing when you buy it, just like clothes. You know, when you get them from the store, they come with sizing, and um, uh, the um. Um, so you should wash your brushes. You know, something you, you may not know, too, is if you ever did any pen and ink, did you know you've got to wash those metal paint nibs because they come from the factory with a non-rust coating on it that will mess up your calligraphy. For those of you who are doing have ever done that. Now, I'm just using just the tip of this brush, a little yellow oxide, and going over this like that. See that kind of creating this bush? And let's just let's get a little yellow here. And I put the reason I put the um, the sticks in, even though I'm covering a lot of them up. The reason I did that was so that I would have a guide, uh, kind of a guide of where I wanted to go, kind of like, you know, I'm to can see where my my bushes have to go up here, because I know all of this up here is. Um, is part of my tree here. And uh, let's do a little bit of this permanent green deep. And it's a little brighter green here. It says all of this in here is, um, is part of that. Um, 
you've got to be the se secret is to put this tree or bush in without um, without losing your cliff. Does that make sense? You don't want to lose the cliff, and you still want the lights and darks. The dark side would, you know, the light's coming from this way, so you can see where it has to be lighter. Okay? And that's why I'm doing that. I'm going to just come along here like this and lighten this cliff up here. Let's see. I want to lighten this cliff up along here like that. There, something like that. Okay. So now, if I took some white and yellow ochre or oxide and made a lighter color, and now I'm just dotting it on here. Yeah. I'm lighting because remember, I'm I'm saying where the light came from, and. Uh, Let's come on up here and do this one. This comes kind of way above this hill here. And then it kind of reaches over this way. So what, what something like this does is gives us a little bit of depth. And I don't want this little third house to run into um, this one. So I'm going to just make it smaller. We're just going to suggest one there. It's way back there. You're barely going to see it. Little tiny, little tiny dwelling way back there. And this is still in the soap greens. So we're going to put a little more shadow in a few places. Any more questions, John? Uh, not this time, I think. All right, so you kind of see how we're how we're doing it. And I want to bring down some. There we go, something like that. Because it's all about lights and darks. Okay, a little bit darker down in here. Now, now, ideally speaking, it would be nice if we dried everything, right? So rather than, I'm going to just put this aside for just a second, okay? And, um, and I, well, before I do that, before I do that, I want to put this aside. I want to bring a little more of our, our bushes over this way. And you need to try. I do have a um, quintessential commercial. I have a one-minute Yeah, why don't you give me a minute to dry it? I'm going to dry yeah, this. A minute, two and a half, and a two minutes. How about a minute? That should be fine. I'll just dry this in a minute, okay, you guys? All right, let me know when you're starting. Uh, I can go. All right, we're going to dry it now. So you look at a painting like this with all the bright colors. This is an acrylic painting of some beautiful boats and all reds and greens and blues and turquoises, and you go, I'd love to paint that, but I wouldn't know where to begin. Not only that, but I wouldn't know how to mix the colors. Therefore, I want to show you the newest uh, offering John and I have created together. It's Ginger Cook's Quintessential color mixing journal and we show you how to take 10 basic acrylic paints so to take the confusion of buying paints plus two bonus colors and white and we show you how to mix really pretty much any color you could think of making and how to do it and not only that but we show you how to make the journal that you can refer to again and again how to get all these greens how to how to use the grayscale how to um how to make skin tones and we leave blank spaces in there so that if you add different, if you buy more paints, 
you can keep the journal going. This is the never-ending journal of color mixing, but it is the quintessential book because you'll never wonder about how to make colors again, and I think you're going to love it. Okay, so I want to say um, I'm going to do a little bit lighter with the yellow. Maybe taking a little bit of this. Uh, this is this lemon yellow is pretty. Let's try that. And usually just the tip of the brush here. Brighter colors bring the eye forward. And um, you know, so you wouldn't put if you put a big piece of yellow. Here, let me just show you. If you put a bunch of yellow back here, takes it, look where your eye goes. You never put yellow in a background unless you grade it. That's a good tip to know, isn't it? And if you're not sure about a color, put it on a piece of paper and put it on your picture and see what you think. Hmm. Just a thought. Okay, so I'm just kind of trying to show where this was a these are captured in the, you know, kind of overlapping each other. They all the, okay, so just some little brighter, brighter leaves. I like some of this lemon yellow too. That's pretty. What is this called? This azo yellow medium. It's kind of an orange. That's pretty with the, um, uh, with the turquoise. That's nice, right? So we're not trying to do a lot of detail here. We're just suggesting this bush. Yep. Just just a little bit. Now, azo yellow medium is just perfect for that. Because we're just suggesting a little bit. These get kind of smaller as they go back. It's a little bit brighter color, so you, you can see where that has to come up here like that. A little bit brighter color on our bush. And uh, bring it back down here like this. Yes and yes. Kind of fun, right? I like, you know, one thing about having all the colors. Yes, I can mix all these colors myself with my 12 colors. It is great to know. But I'll tell you something really nice about having all the colors right there when you need a color. Like, I need a color. I wonder where this could be. Oh, there it is. That's exactly what I need. So I'm going to put a little bit of dark in here for contrast in a couple places. That's our little soapy green. Yeah, soapy green. I like our little soapy green here color, right? And uh, uh, I think that's how I'm going to rinse the brush pretty well. Once again, the journal is not just Salvador paint. Everything is just Salvador paint. Oh, no, the journal. We start off, the journal has nothing. No, no, I'm going to show the journal again. We're going to stop a minute. The journal is not Salvador paints. It just shows you they're a good paint. example. It's every every paint. We start off with my 12 colors, which are the heavy body professional acrylic paints, which are in all thousand videos I've done on our website and most of YouTube before this year. All the colors I always use. And now sometimes they're Matisse, sometimes they're Liquitex, sometimes they're Golden, and sometimes they're Holbein, but they're all the professional colors. And we start off the book with those colors. Um, and we show you these colors and what they are. Here's the Thalo Blue, Ultramarine Blue, the, Thalo green, uh, cad yellow medium, and so forth. And we used Holbein for the book, but we could have used because we just had a lot of it. Could have used anything, you know, those. And then this is what a photograph of these colors look like in black and white. This is not painted on there in black and white. This is what these colors look like. This is what Thalo blue looks like over white. And here's what it looks like over black. You can barely see it. So you need to understand the relationship. We show you how the grayscale works. That's so key. We show you how the grayscale is supposed to work in your paintings, right? What is the reference? So suppose, and then we take you, so let's just take you to, and then here's some, here's some bonus colors that I bought in the, you know, Cad Yellow Deep Marigold, and here's what they do, right, and whether they're transparent or not. And you may have some colors I don't have, but we want, you want to leave enough pages to be able to add, 
because I know you guys, you all bought the crazy colors at some point, but you got to put them in your book. Whatever you go and you got to put them in your book, okay? And then suppose you want to make this green right here. Well, how did I how did I get that? Well, this is the page where I use phthalo blue and I show you the recipe of how to get that green, which coincidentally is very similar to this green with a little yellow in it, right? So basically, we show you with 10 colors plus two bonus colors and white and white to make thousands of colors. You only need 10, these only need these 10 colors plus the two bonus ones and white. And that's what we show you. But for instance, um, uh, here's all the different things you can do with Dazanine Purple. All right, let's talk about skin tones because everybody asks about that skin tones. What colors do you absolutely have to have to have skin tones? And did you know it makes a difference what color you put them over? What black should you own? How does glazing work? How does, uh, we just mentioned, we just included the Salvador paints because a lot of you have them. And suppose you ran out of that green, how would you make it? Just saying, right? And this is what they look like over black and white and so forth. Here's, uh, so it's not just them, and then we go on, even went on and showed you some very special paints from Golden, and what they do. And that's a kit that Golden sells, called their Classic Theory, uh, Classic Theory Kit, and this is all their colors, and, um, and, how, and how they mix, and can you make them. Really interesting. For instance, if you're the person that doesn't like, sometimes people complain about acrylics being very, very bright because if they look at some of the old faded paintings in museums, and they probably were brighter when they started, but you know, time goes by, and they want a more subdued color, those would be the colors I would pick if I wanted to do something more subdued. I would go to maybe buy a couple of those. But anyway, that's what the journal is about, and it's about your own color discovery. It's the never ending journal. Because as you discover something about color, you'll add it to your journal. Mm. Now, to learn how to get access to them, there's a video on the home page below everything. Yes. So to learn how to access the actual um, the lessons, right, that's on our home page uh, below. You just scroll down, it'll show you how to access the lessons. So the, if I'm going to finish this one up now. We appreciate you guys, you know, uh, taking the time to to hear us about this because we think it's kind of cool. I think it's really cool. I want to take, I want to make a reddish color. Take some carmine and uh, which would be like a red, right? Some kind of red and yellow and I want to make kind of a bright orange color. More yellow. I'm going to use all the yellow up, right? Come here, I'll grab some of this yellow too. I want sort of an orange color. And um, uh, let's add a little tiny bit of purple to that, just a touch. There we go, just a little bit darker, a little tiny bit of that blue-violet color. All right, now, I want to come in here like that. Is that going to let me do that? I don't know. It's kind of dried a bit. Let's see. Um, I want to put back... Uh, let me change brushes. It's always something, right? There's always a brush. That's the, what's the next brush you want? Here, I want to change brushes and use some. Um, uh, when you're doing little short, um, tiny brush strokes, a, 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 a round brush probably works better. When you're trying to do long, thin brush strokes, those dagger brushes are the thing. It depends on what you're trying to do, right? And I got too much water on that. Let's just try a little bit of red and burnt sienna. Here we go. Let's just there. I'll get a, I just want an orange color. This can't be that hard. I'm going to roll my brush so that, here, let's just test it. Yeah. I wanted to just go over some of these branches a little bit. Let's just try this lighter orange. Okay, with a little bit of a, I don't want too many branches in here, but the ones that show up, I thought it would be nice to be able to see them a little bit more. Um, and I wanted them kind of a reddish brown color. There we go. And you don't want to get them too fat, but here, let's come up here like that. Let's put that in. Do we have anything darker? 
maybe a couple of these because of where they are have to be darker. Okay. There we go. I just wanted to have a couple of little branches here. And um, let's do this on this little house right here. And just kind of tuck that house back into the woods. And uh, so any other questions, John? Okay, so um, John's been answering pretty much all the questions, just typing them in there. So um, if you're watching this later, take a moment and read the chat, huh? There's all, kinds of stuff going on in the chat today. There's all kinds of stuff going on in the chat today, yeah? And um, which is good to know, right? Yeah. So here's a little of that lemon yellow. Is there anywhere we want to do something a little brighter? Let's take... Let's just finish this up with a few little spots of light. Let's just make a couple of these branches a bit lighter. Just maybe with a light. See, see what I, I mean? Know. I know. Just acrylics dry darker. And you may have it's thought you would just... That. And it may, may be that you just thought you were just swell. And then you weren't. And so, But that's okay. So just... You think you're rolling along going, well, this is awesome. And you, you take the painting downstairs and you look at it and going, I swear, when I last looked, this was fine. <laughs> what happened here, right? And that's okay. So let's take a little bit of the white paint now and give it a little bit. See, maybe even my white surf kind of got darker. Got dirtied up, right, by white surf? Can't have that. I know it's a little polluted out there in those ocean waters, but, you know, it's not that bad, right? Let's do a little bit more of that. Remember when you talked about the yellow in the background? Yeah. Arizona would like to know. Ginger says, for no yellow in the background, you will apply to sunset. Oh, no. That's a good question. So the question is, does the no yellow rule apply to sunsets? No, just not talking about skies here. We're talking about land. So if you're going to, for instance, suppose Whatever you have... Whatever your subject is, I mean... Yeah, what, but here's the thing. When it, the farther away it gets, it grays. And so if you're going to do yellow in the background, you have to gray it. You don't do a... So you can do a gray yellow with, by adding purple and white to it. You can gray it. You can Because sometimes you may be doing a field of, say, mustard, and it goes all the way back to the horizon. So yes, there's going to be yellow back there, but it's not going to be as bright as the stuff in front. That's all. Because your eye, you know, that's all. And but, but really, that's true of an awful lot of colors, right? Okay. So let's let's do this one. Let's do a little of this bright green up here too. See, it's not just the yellow. We're going to add a little tiny bit of this bright green color in a couple places. See, and see how we brought the eye forward there too a little bit. We brought this branch forward. You know, even though, yes, we know. I want to make that very small. Just something like that, so that you you can see the difference between uh, this and let's see, maybe we'll just do a little bit like this. And I think I want a little bit of orange, just a little bit of orange up here on my cliff here in the front. Um, because, and, and the reason I'm doing that, and I'll add a little white to that, the reason I'm doing that is because orange and turquoise are, um, buddies. are buddies. So if I put a little bit of orange up in here. I have another great question for you. Todd has another great question for me. This one's from Elaine. Oh, from Elaine, okay. How do you avoid green skies when you have a yellow and a blue in your sky? Oh, th th this is a good question. Um, Elaine asks, how do you avoid a green sky when there's yellow and blue and they're both wet and there's yellow in the sky? That's the secret here. They're both wet. So you start off with whatever you want yellow. You have, put that on there and dry it. And then you go on with your next color. You dry it. You have to dry. you got to dry. And if you're going to do a sunset, you start off with the yellows first because that's hard to get. You can't really get a good yellow sunset over blue. You really have to start with the yellow underpainting 
uh, for a sunset and then and then put the blues on top of it make sure everything's dry that's the thing that uh and that's a really good question because people don't realize the importance of um of drawing enough i mean and drawing your paints is just um is key i got to tell you you got to draw your paints um and drawing them will make such a difference as far as um uh, how your painting comes out um just take the moment and t take a moment and dry them all right so here here's where we are with this and i think i did i did pretty good i could have gone a little bit lighter because we keep talking about acrylics drying darker could have gone a little bit lighter in a couple places on my cliff soften that up a bit but there you go because you want that to be forward but there you go I think we we could be it's safe to feel like don't you think and then if we want to be the last of the big spenders we could have some of the surf going up on the cliff like that too that might be nice what do you guys think don't you, did we get too carried away I don't think so huh let's put a little let's put a little white going up on the cliff because uh, it can happen and then we could put a little bit of um let's 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 just give a little bit of surf this way too something with a little mixing white just kind of put something that way so we've got a little movement in the water Ooh, pretty all right i feel like we have accomplished our picture you guys i hope you do too um uh one thing we could do well i would say that but then i could take a little bit of mixing white you just watch watch you just take a little mixing white and you kind of push the back or the zinc white and you push the back of the hills back there when you do that um what happens is is that you just add a little bit of what's called atmospheric um a perspective and just kind of push those way back and, uh, and even would do more on the water line back here suggest everybody watch the introductory video to your journal um I, I, one of the things I want to say before we close is I, I would love it if you would watch the introductory video to my journal. You, that's free. You can click right on the journal. Introduction is free. Watch that. It'll answer so many questions you thought you, that we didn't give you answers to. Let's see. What if we did a little bit of mixing? Um, there you go. Let's put a little mix there. Oh, wow. Do we have some distance there? We pushed it back. Yeah, we we pushed that back and 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 just um just just added a little bit of mixing white here, and I added a little bit of the clouds here, just another layer of the mix oh, mixing. And we've got such just distance. Now I want to just show you where'd that go? Hang on a second. Here. Now remember I told you for our wave and water master class, yeah. we had this painting, right? Back Can you back out, right? And, and, and the, the original artist, you know, wanted to show it was a hot summer day, so he made the sky yellow. It's that's interesting. Cool. That's, how, that's how you can say it. So you really want to say something's hot, like in the tropics, make the sky kind of a yellow color, and then yeah. everybody goes, oh, wow, it's hot, right? We don't know why we do that, but we do. But, uh, like, here's our, here's our painting, and don't you think we kind of... Um, it's the same spot, really. We're just further back. And we went on a cooler day, but you know what? Uh, everything, you know, everything, you know, there's nothing new under the sun. Have you ever heard that expression? There's nothing new under the sun? And um, that's that's really, um, I think that this is our wave and water class one. I've seen some of you. Um, Andrew did this, did a tremendous job on this one. Um, anyway, I think this is really neat. You'll be able to do this easily. I've explained it all. Yes? I think we have, and we want to thank you very much for, um, you know, going to the ocean with us, and I hope you didn't. The question I'd like to know is what kind of uh, YouTube before, we, and don't answer it in the chat, answer it in the, um, in the comments after the video's over, because uh, YouTube loves it when you comment. I like to read the comments, see what you have to say. I want to know whether you want some summer scenes, some fall scenes, some Christmas scenes. What would you like to see between for the month of December uh, for YouTube because we've got a few Mondays coming up and uh, we want to make sure that we're 
uh, presenting videos that you want to see. And thanks for watching, and uh, happy holidays from John and I. We love you guys, and those of you who were able to contribute to the live chat or the uh, Ginger Cook um, uh, live uh, gallery in our PayPal system, uh, thank you very much. And if you're watching this later and still want to do that, we say thank you. Absolutely. Bye, everyone. Bye. Hi, Ginger Cook here. And I know many acrylic artists would look at a painting like this and say, wow, I'd love to paint that. I wouldn't know where to begin to mix the colors. I don't know if I own those colors. And then they stop there. But this is uh, why I have created the Quintessential Color Mixing Journal. Uh, it's an interesting thing when you're talking about acrylic paint or any kind of paint, really, that you're, uh, even watercolor, the same thing is true of. When you try to print out the color, it's never going to look the same as it does on your palette. And this is one of the things where you kind of have to do it yourself. You don't kind of have to. So what we do in 13 hours of video is we show you how to make your own color mixing journal. We show you what the essential colors are, how to use bonus colors, how to do skin tones. There's over 13 hours of video of just us making this book and showing you step by step how to do it. We also compare... Uh, some of the other paints that you've seen us use, the Salvador paints, there's over 24 colors in a Salvador paint kit. What if you run out of one? Could you use our, our 12 essential colors plus the two bonus and get one of these? We show you how. This is, we even, this is a most amazing book in that it keeps on giving. We show you how to not only do a painting like this uh, in a special bonus five hour lesson on how to paint this, but how to use the journal to, um, always have a reference in, in a color mixing guide on how you did this painting for the next painting. So you can use extra pages in the book to keep on giving. And the other bonus thing is too, as we um, continue on, once you own the videos, the tw you know, the 20 hours of videos for this book, once you own that, if we as we update it, you will continue to have access to the updates. It's like a subscription where you didn't subscribe. Once you own the book, uh, we'll keep doing that. For instance, when we added a golden color mixing class theory with the old world paints and what's the difference with those. So as we get inspired to do more and we add to the book, you can add to yours. This is a wonderful journal. And what's more, it's made by you. How fabulous is that? This is the best set of videos we've ever put together on color mixing. It is the quintessential color mixing journal, the gingercookstore.com. And it's right now available, and it's really a gift that keeps on giving.